Now that we have the blade tensioned and tracked, the next step to do is to adjust the guides and you'll find this on pages number 33 through 35 in the owner's manual. In order to adjust the guides, the first thing we'll do is loosen this knob and slide the thrust bearing forward. One quick note is to make sure that your upper guide post is locked in place when you're making this adjustment. There's a lock handle on the back and that way you don't have any deflection in the post. So now with the guides themselves loose, I'm going to bring the thrust bearing forward to where it just touches the back edge of the blade. Don't push hard enough on it to move or deflect the blade. You just want to touch the back edge of the blade or have it just off the, uh, the back edge of the blade uh, a whisper. Lock the handle down. Now you're going to bring the entire guide assembly forward to where the side guides, these little side ceramic pieces, are behind the gullet or behind the cutout, the notch of the tooth. And when they're just behind that, you'll lock them down into position using this knob right here. And finally, you're going to bring the side guides in to where they touch the edge of the blade. And with the Laguna blade, you'll find that the blades are very, very consistent. They're very well ground. And I can bring these guides in and actually just touch the edge of the blade. I'll bring them up. Just touch the edge of the blade. I don't want to move or deflect the blade. Just come up and just touch it. Lock it down and then do the same with the opposite side. I'll bring it up to where it just touches the blade. Lock it down. And then I'll make sure that the blade slides through easily. You can put too much pressure on the side of these to where it locks the blade down. So you always want to check and make sure that the blade uh, moves freely through those guides. We've done the top. We're going to go ahead and do the bottom set right now. Same process. Bring the guides forward. Lock that in position. Bring the side guides forward behind the goal of the, uh, uh, or cut out of the tooth. And then bring the side guides in. Let's go ahead and set those now. We're going to adjust the lower guides and I've removed the table so I can show it to you clearly. Now this can be done with the table in place. You can get access to these knobs fairly easily with the table in place and even down through the hole in the throat insert for the table. Now here's one trick that I want to let you know here. This is the lock knob that slides the thrust bearing and it can be put in this position or in the outer position. I find that it's easier to adjust when it's in the outer position. However, if you're doing a table tilt to 45 degrees, that can get in the way. So you may have to move it back to this position as you tilt the table up. The nice thing is you'll have access to it very easily with the table in this position because you can reach it from the back side. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the outside right now. That'll make it easier for me to adjust because most of my cuts are done with the table at 90 degrees. Simply install it in the outside position right here. And again, that'll make it easier for you to do most of your adjustments. So now we've got that set to the outside position. Now, everything is loose on the guides. I'm going to go ahead and slide the entire guide assembly forward. Again, until the ceramic is just behind the gullet or the cut out of the tooth. I want to make sure that it's fairly centered on the blade. Lock down the back knobs. And those are just finger tight for those. I'm going to loosen and slide the thrust bearing forward to where it just touches the back edge of the blade. Lock that down and then the side guides. We'll loosen these up. Slide them into where they just touch the blade but not pinch it. Secure those down. Make sure that the blade slides through and we're ready to go. And again, it's really easy to adjust these lower guides using the access from the side and from the front of the saw right here. Again, we removed our table just for the sake of, uh, of filming it. You do not need to remove your table to adjust those lower guides. It's easily adjustable right here. Let's go ahead and reinsert our throat plate insert. That'll drop on right here. And again, a Phillips head screwdriver will tighten this down. And we're just about ready to start cutting. Now I want to just cover the basics again. When you put a blade on for the first time, you won't need to adjust your table because that's a one-time adjustment. But every time you put a blade on, you'll have to go through and set your tension, then your tracking, and finally your guides. And there's one more adjustment that we're going to make to the fence, and we'll do that once we start cutting. So tension, tracking, guides, and lastly, your drift angle adjustment. And that's only needed if you're doing straight line cuts using your fence. If you're using a quarter inch blade and you're doing curve work, you won't need to do that adjustment. Now we're about ready to start up our saw for the first time and make our first few test cuts. Before you start up your saw, we want to really talk about safety. 
And part of the safety that we talk about is uh, one that we all know, and that's to wear proper eye protection. Get your safety glasses out, put them on. Uh, hearing protection, uh, if the uh, shop is noisy and, and your uh, ears are sensitive, we do like to uh, use hearing protection. The other thing you want to do is manage your dust. This saw can make a lot of dust very, very quickly. And to handle the dust, it's got a nice four inch dust port on the back side of the saw. We recommend connecting a dust collector to your saw and having it running any time that you're cutting with the saw. To help the dust collection, we have this little baffle and that inserts right in the front of the saw and it surrounds the blade and it closes off the chamber immediately in front of that dust collection port. So this simply just slides in place right in the front. It's right next to the wheel brush and the wheel brush will also brush off the uh, dust from the lower wheel right in front of that uh, dust collection port. So go ahead and get your hose connected to your dust collector. If you don't have one, Laguna makes a nice assortment of dust collectors as well.